Hello, everybody. This is Gabe Tice back with another episode of All Nighter Discussions. And with me today is Lucio Vasquez. How are you doing, Lucio? I am doing very well. How are you? Good, because today we're going to talk about uh, one of my favorite movies, American Movie. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, here we talk about midnight movies and cult movies, but this is a little bit more special. It's a cult movie about a cult filmmaker. Yeah, what was his name again? I, I, Mark. Mark. I, I remember Mark. Mark. The last name starts with a Broad B. Broadchant. It's he has Broad a very exotic. I love this movie. I swear, <laughs> it's just it's a hard name to remember. But no, it's a documentary about uh, an independent filmmaker who is making. Uh, at first, he wants to make a feature film, but then he scales back to make a, a forty-minute horror film. And this documentary crew is following him and tracking his, you know. Um, his making of these two movies, but also just his life and the way uh, his filmmaking interferes with his life and vice versa. So we watched it the other nice night. I've been a fan of this movie for some time, but it was your first viewing, Lucio. What was yeah. your What was your first impression? I really liked it. Uh, I, I, you know, I you told me towards the middle that this is actually real, right? And I I don't know why, but my first um, my assumption was that this was just another mockumentary. We've been watching a lot of like found footage films and whatnot so i just assumed that this would be another fake one and um it's so kind of ridiculous at times i mean i don't know if it's just the people from milwaukee but it's just wow or, or if, all right <laughs> or if it's just casual guys, prejudice but it's right just out the gate they, they're definitely unique characters mm -hmm. mark yeah. is definitely a larger than life character yeah and what's his friend's name the, the, the mike guy? mike 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 chant yeah he <laughs> They every, make a comedy duo. They every really time do. He talked. <laughs> just it was funny. I just it was definitely an, a unique experience to kind of watch because it it felt like a fake documentary. Like it felt like it was kind of like yeah, like a larger than life film. Mm -hmm. But you have to remind yourself like these are real people. This is actually a real thing that we're witnessing. And uh, yeah, no, it, it was it was pretty interesting. I really liked it. Yeah, and the fact that you couldn't tell if it was real or not, I think, really speaks to uh, what makes Mark such a fascinating guy. Mm. That he takes this passion, this enthusiasm, and he just turns it up to 11, right? Like, mm -hmm. And the way he like kind of talks to the camera and really explains himself, like, he's a guy from Milwaukee, but he, he's clearly articulate. Yep. And he clearly knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And I think the the big theme that I want to get into with this movie is the fear of being a normal person. Because mm -hmm. that's what drives him the most. Did you get that sense? Yeah. I mean, they're definitely, from my from what I see, they're not necessarily normal, like, you know, like sterile individuals, right? So, mm -hmm. like, they're, they're definitely succeeding. But, like, I could definitely see, uh, like, he didn't want to be like his brothers. He didn't want to be just some guy on a, on a like a regular job he was like this was his life um yeah because oh sorry i don't know no, you can go but he's you know surrounded by people he considers normal you know they mm -hmm. work normal jobs they you know they live in normal houses and they have a, a routine that doesn't change from day to day like they're stuck yeah and he even as a kid told people, you know, I'm going to become a famous director and I'm not going to have to deal with this stuff. So that's always been his driving force. And I think for a lot of creative people, that is like, that's the fear that really drives them. Is it the definitely fear of being it resonates with, with people kind mm -hmm. of like us who, who try to create things and want that to be our career. Um, it's not necessarily an easy industry to be a part of for sure. And it's a, oftentimes a very unstable and scary uh, uh, line of work because you don't you don't really know what's gonna happen. You could just be like you can just fall straight on your butt, or you can be moderately successful. You know, it, it, there's a lot that can happen. It's an industry that can eat you alive. Yeah. And this was made in 1997, so he doesn't have the advantages that Lucio and I have. <laughs> you know, he didn't have Adobe Premiere. Yeah. He didn't have digital HD cameras. Yeah, every you know. it, the the film went to great lengths to kind of show the, uh, not I guess not mundane, but like the the uh, extensive. The kind of tedious stuff. Yes, tedious. That's the word I'm thinking. Thank you. Um, the tedious, uh, like, 
filming, like editing in particular, like editing on film, you would have to like cut the actual film yeah. and like glue. Like it's something that we don't necessarily need to experience anymore. Um, certain people, like I guess the Hateful Eight was was uh, was filmed on. Yeah, so, some film people still do film, but then they they but, also have the money to do it and yeah, Mark is. And it also, yeah. I don't think it was edited film wise. Like they they probably like just processed the film and then they probably edited in Premiere or something. The Hateful Eight, I mean. Yeah. Um, I don't even know how they do it nowadays, but you you see how people did it back then. Yeah, it and was that, all yeah. film. It was all um, authentic, even like the, the little film scratches that makes it kind of like you know that the whole aesthetic that people sure. kind of like love now. Like it was just how things were, <laughs> and yeah, it, I thought I just think the entire movie was is, is definitely a time capsule for sure. Oh, definitely in a big way. Mm-hmm. And film was just about to change in you know some pretty fundamental ways, like right after mm-hmm. this movie was released. So you know it, it was like it, it was kind of this portrait of this bygone era in that way, and that Mark Mark was kind of like this crusader for this for this period of time. I don't know what Mark is up to nowadays. Mm-hmm. I know he's he's done some other independent work. He's become like you know a celebrity with this movie. Mm-hmm. You can see him on like David Letterman and shows like that but you know there's this one great line where he's trying to convince his uncle to give him money and he's like you know uncle bill you don't want to be like a normal person do you you know he said you're just sitting outside of a shed all day you know we can film you sitting outside of a shed but you're not just gonna be sitting outside of a shed Mm -hmm. and it's like the fact that it's being filmed like elevates the you know the action what he's doing it's like it's the filming that makes a difference in his life because I guess it, you know, immortalizes it and it, mm. and it turns it into, you know, they say that, you know, art isn't about something. Art is something. And it, it turns it into this some, something that actually matters. Yeah. And then, like, they, they go to – they go to great lengths to show that, like, it's almost like uh, – he, he's, he's so hell-bent on making his dream a reality that he's – kind of like it's not that he doesn't love his children but it's also like he could get a normal job and support better mm-hmm. right like sure. hypothetically speaking but then again um it's not like it's not like he's not there for them and whatnot but they show like his personal life and how like his dream is kind of making things a little harder for him like the, the mother of his uh, children is gonna take them away and whatnot and you know it, it, it's pretty it's pretty sad at times because sure. you know you, you kind of see the harsh realities of someone who doesn't want to give up on their dreams, but the rest of the world is essentially t- f- trying to force them to. Yeah, because like this is a cult. This movie is called American Movie, mm-hmm. and it's about the American dream. And what the American dream is, if you work hard enough, and if you're a good person, you can make it. Mm-hmm. And that's what Mark is trying to do. He's busting his ass. He's completely devoting himself, and he's not a bad guy by any means. He's complicated, but he's, you know, certainly not a terrible person. Mm. And, you know, you see him go through the process, the hard work. He makes his movie, and, you know, he gets to become a celebrity because of this documentary, but that actual movie, it wasn't going to take him anywhere. It was just another chapter in his life. Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of celebrating the American dream, but it's also kind of like stepping back and looking at just how... Uh, I guess realistic that is. Yeah, I, I gotta say because throughout the movie we we see him film his movie, which is called Coven. Yeah, not <laughs> and, Coven, Coven. Yeah, it's Coven because <laughs> Coven sounds like oven. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's it was interesting to see kind of like behind the scenes of of this little this little Coven movie, and uh, they you know you're selling like a, at one point they smash a guy's head through a cabin yeah. and they're having difficulty with it. And it's hilarious because they're trying to like break the cabinet with the guy's head but they're they're, they're they keep failing so he's they're just smashing this guy's head into a cabinet yeah, until and then it they, breaks <laughs> yeah but then they discover like oh i'm sorry this is like this is like completely hard never yeah. mind let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's just it's it's not strictly a comedy i had asked you before and if it was a funny movie and you were like eh, you know it's complicated mm-hmm. and there are times that it, the movie's hilarious there are times that it's actually quite sad because you know like you were saying to me before it's kind of like life you know it's it's life isn't strictly a comedy you know it's um 
it's just basically a chapter in this man's life. Yeah, of a man devoted to something. Yeah, and it's like three years or two years. Three years he was making Coven. Yeah. And uh, I have this very interesting story. So when I was taking an intro to screenwriting, we had to announce our, uh, we had to pitch our final screenplays. Mm. And this one guy got up. He looks exactly like Mark. He has the goatee, the long hair. He mm. wears the same types, type of shirts. And he gets up and he says, so I'm making a, I'm writing a horror movie called Coven. And then like, I did a double take. And then my professor said, wait, hold on. Oh, you're, you're doing the thing the guys in the movie did. Mm. And the guy, the student is like, what? <laughs> and my professor is like, you know, like the documentary, you're, you're, you're inspired by the documentary, right? <laughs> and, and the student is just like, he's freaking out right <laughs> now. He just says, I, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. And my professor is like, whatever, never mind, just carry on. So That's I don't so know, weird. man. Like <laughs> he was reincarnated. I don't know. I don't, he's probably not dead. But. And Mark is <laughs> not dead. He's like yeah. in his fifties. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see him. Yeah. Like, where is he now? That's interesting. Yeah, he's still writing the wave of this movie, and uh, he and Mike, I think, have starred in a couple like indie films mm. here and there. Um, Coven did not make back money, mm. and uh, he he's he hasn't lived out his dream in the traditional sense, but uh, his story has become very inspiring to people. But you know why is that? He's not he he's not untalented, mm. but he's not a great talent. And you can see in the clips they show of his movie that there's obviously some deep flaws. I mean, there. I think it adds to the inspiration because in the end he still gets it made, even though he's not like creating some magnum opus, you know. Like Coven. I mean, again, I haven't really seen Coven fully, so I can't really yeah. say if it's bad it's or good. It's forty minutes, but we've seen clips, mm-hmm. and it didn't seem like like amazing. Um, but he got it made. And that's commendable, right? Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter how much hardship you go through. Like, are you, if you are determined enough, no matter if you're really skilled or highly skilled, like, you can get you can get it done. And this is just a, a, a evidence, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so people see his story and they say, well, this guy made his movie even though everything in the world was against him. Mm-hmm. He had no advantages, but he still got it done, and so can I. Yeah. And that way, it is an inspiring story, but there's also the double side of it. Like, well, look at what a toll this whole thing uh, took on his life, Mm -hmm. you know, on his personal life, uh, his personal dignity. Well, it's just a test of, like, you know, like I said, the the, the film industry isn't an easy, you know, occupation. It it could definitely take a toll on anyone who's involved. Uh, Mm -hmm. I remember... I've, I've listened to a couple podcasts with filmmakers who go on and they tell them, you know, how they started and their, their experiences. And there's always a pattern of like, it's definitely a, it's not easy. Sure. And it takes a toll on you and you need to f- try to find that balance between like your job and, you know, what you, what your life <laughs> because that could, this could easily take over. Yeah. I know personally, I mean, my work, cause I, you know, we're, we're both, filmmakers but i'm i'm uh, as opposed to like film i'm also doing corporate videography and weddings and whatnot and that picked up a lot in the past months and it's for me it's kind of hard now to find that balance between work and my life mm-hmm. you know because at the same time i love my work and this is what i wanted and so i'm neglecting the the the, my, the parts of my life that i should be you know what i mean it, it's a hard is balance. it like a your, your personal life and your relationships things like that or is sometimes it, yeah. it's not having necessarily a, a, a bad effect it's not like you know burning bridges or anything but you know i i am spending hours upon hours in front of my computer rather than like taking my girlfriend on a date you know stuff yeah. like that and so you can definitely see that he's he's trying to strike that balance he's his children are with him while he's editing and so it, it's it's commendable you know he he goes through and hardships no matter how hard he gets it done yeah and there's just the advantage he has of being a charismatic person like yeah. they say that at the beginning that his best gift, gift has always been his mouth mm. and man like some of the things he says in this movie like did you have a favorite line oh gosh oh gosh you know i have mine i'm blanking to be completely honest i okay. mean just the way he talked in general 
Sure. I, I really, I literally love <laughs> Yeah. But, but uh, what was yours? What was yours? They're making a mockery out of my words, man. Mm. <laughs> he he said, as, as, you know, an aspiring filmmaker, he says things that you would never dare say out loud. Because mm. what a ridiculous thing to say. But, like, you feel that in your soul. Like, yes. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Hope you guys didn't hear that. Smack the microphone out of anger. <laughs> that line was so beautiful. Got to gotta hit something. Exactly. But, and, you know, there's something like that every scene. And, of course, other characters. Like, this feels like an ensemble cast to mm. me. Like, Mike is his own character. Uncle Bill is his own character. Yeah. Yeah. And it, like, more than just making a portrait of this one guy, it's also about this community he grew up in and how, like, he doesn't want to be a normal person. Mm. Like, he resents the station life these people have. But, like, they help him. Yeah. And he, like, gets a real strong sense of support from them. Yeah, I mean, in a way, I mean, it, it's quite uh, obvious that they are in inspired in a way by him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the way they, they want to help him, uh, like, I think in the beginning of the movie, it's like, oh, what's two weeks to help this guy? Achieve uh, his dream. Yeah. And, you know, even his mother. His mother is, like, behind the camera at one point, which is hilarious. Yeah. And his <laughs> mother cracked me up, man. It, it, it's It's... It's great. I think his friend, I forget, Ken Keen. Is he the one who went to prison? Yeah. Yeah. And they never explain why. They just kind of pick him up from jail. <laughs> and, they, like, the there was a sting operation to get him, too. Like, the police went into this guy's basement, turned off the fuse box, and then waited for him to come down. <laughs> like, is that what the police normally do? It sounds like he did something pretty serious, if is that's that the happened? case. Yeah, they, they explained that. Oh, gosh. I must have... I must have blacked out or something. I, I, you blacked out? I blacked out. Because yeah. you're such a terrible alcoholic. Yeah. Well, no, Even when I, you're not I, drinking, I, yeah. you black out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm dying. Uh, yeah, but I, I guess I didn't catch that. Yeah. But there's also Mark's you know, relationship with alcohol that, uh, it, that's probably the most um, concerning aspect of his personality. Yeah. Because you see in one scene where he drinks a little too much and he just, he goes off the rails. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's not, like, completely crazy or anything, but no. he's just being incoherent and just kind of making everyone uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, like, he's shouting at the TV. Like, he, he's yeah. shouting at the, the Packers mm -hmm. and, like, how, man, I'm never going to work a, a motherfucking factory job, motherfucker. Yeah, he's like, yeah. Yeah, and his mom is right there. Mm -hmm. And, like, it, it's, it's not like he's hitting anybody yeah, or anything, yeah. but you really see, again, that fear of just being a normal person, like... Mm -hmm. He doesn't explain what he thinks is so bad about, like, having that that daily routine and everything. But uh, you, you see it and you feel it. And I think that's what resonates most about filmmakers, mm -hmm. you know, when they see this movie. But I was wondering, did this movie kind of inspire you more to be a filmmaker or did it kind of alarm you more? Well, it depends. Or, or, yeah, actually, this is a point I wanted to make earlier, so thank you um, for reminding me. But... Like, filmmaking in general, like, when we see things like this, it could either A, uh, inspire us, or B, deter us, you know? So, like, mm -hmm. it, this isn't... I don't want to, like, toot my own horn or anything. I'm not going to say, like, oh, I'm so, so strong-willed. But, I mean, in a sense, you, you either have to be kind of very strong-willed or honestly kind of insane to kind of, like, risk... Like, it's it would be very easy for both of us to kind of just fall into a... Uh, I guess a, a, a ordinary nine to five job, right? Like it's more stability. You mm -hmm. don't really have to worry about a, a nearly as much, I think. Um, so going in and wanting this very unstable thing, you know, you have to be fully committed. And mm -hmm. seeing this, I felt inspired. But then again, some some people might see the movie and see all the. Of like you know oh he's gonna lose his kids oh you know and yeah. then he didn't even get any money out of it and they might think okay well maybe maybe filmmaking wasn't the best decision for him maybe you know maybe it's not for me because a lot of people in our I guess level right now college mm -hmm. I think they may be uh, some of them are are experiencing that you know yeah definitely more casual uh filmmakers are going to see this and be deterred because they might not realize the level of commitment mm -hmm. that film requires and obviously somebody who just sees it more as a passing interest is i mean this movie is speaking to people who want to make it their life yeah and want to commit their lives to it 
and I was inspired by the end of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but then they also leave on this bittersweet note. Um, yeah, his yeah. his uncle dies. He leaves him fifty thousand dollars to make his feature film, which is what he needed. Mm -hmm. And the feature film still didn't get made. Yeah. And you wonder what circumstances allowed this guy who made a 40 minute short out of practically nothing. Uh, what deterred him? Was it the lack of success that Colvin had? Was it maybe like finally the pressures uh, got to him? I don't know. I mean, the thing is like his uncle, uh, Bill. Bill, yeah. Yeah. He was uh, funding Colvin. Right, he was. Yeah, he, he was, was, he was. He was an executive yeah, producer, yeah. and so he was funding it, and he was supporting Mark he, reluctantly. He wasn't <laughs> really uh, too thrilled about it, but he was still supporting. And then, yeah, I mean, it it says. I mean, this was made ninety seven, right? Yeah. Do we know if it was? Have you done any research recently? Do you know if anything any anything has been made recently? I I haven't done much research into his personal life there's not a lot of information out there mm -hmm. uh so he, it's, it's for sure he, hasn't been made though right it hasn't okay. no um at least not anything resembling like the original film he wanted to make mm -hmm. like i said he's been acting in other people's productions he's been you know i mean this movie really changed the game for him like mm -hmm. he he was a public figure not because he was a great filmmaker but he was a great filmmaker like as a person character he is a great character yeah, yeah. yeah. and like tommy wiseau in a way right i mean it's that's a harsh comparison of well, course no, 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 but no, no. there there's like a the, the public figure aspect of him he's not known for his films yeah. he's known for well he's not known for making the worst film of all time he's yeah, that's true, that's true. yeah i would say just more comparison as to the public figure rather than a filmmaker sure yeah. sure he's he's more valuable as a public figure a than character. a filmmaker yeah as a character um, as a persona. Yeah, yeah. And th that's a double-edged sword. I mean, like, in some sense, he got what he wanted. I mean, he got validation. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, this was a big movie. It won, uh, you know, some awards. It won a lot of major festivals. But it also wasn't his movie. Yeah, and, you know, that yeah. must be... I don't know. I, I feel kind of... Uh, not betrayed, but I just feel hurt by that, you know? A movie about me does better than any movies that I've ever made. Um, I don't know if I would even feel validated by that. I don't know, because, I mean... Maybe bitter. Well, this movie won him so many fans and admirers, though. Like, people really looked up to... I don't want to say looked up to him, like mm -hmm. like he was MLK. But, they, you know, they, they admired his tenacity and his courage. And I think, if I were him, I would feel more of a double-edged sword. Like, obviously, people at least... My experience as a filmmaker has been validated. Me making Coven has been validated. My, you know, talent hasn't. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, hey, so many people don't don't get any of those things yeah. in their lives, you know. So maybe it's uh, maybe it's realizing that this is your place in the world. This is what you're most valuable for. I and, mean, that's yeah. like. You know, that's a very optimistic view of, like, the situation. You know, who, who knows how he... I mean, I, I personally haven't researched much into him, yeah. you know, after we've seen the movie. So I can't really say what he's what he's said, like, said in interviews and whatnot after. Mm -hmm. um, I could just assume that, like, yeah, the, the double-edged sword would make sense. But, like, who knows? Maybe he doesn't feel that way maybe he feels as if like i i can only speak from how i might feel in this like situation like hypothetically like i i, I would want to be i would want to feel validated as a filmmaker it, it would make me it's not exactly the validation i would want but then again um i think it's admirable of taking a situation that you know you can't really like take control of and seeing the best in it you know yeah like well, it goes back to that question of what did he really want, and I think that's just not having a normal life, you know, being yeah. uh, being distinguished as a person, and just he got that. How about how you go about that? Yeah, just, yeah. Not that filmmaking wasn't important for him, or that it wasn't a passion, but mm -hmm. the thesis of the film is that you know, he he's being driven by by that dream to by that dream of glory, yeah, more than anything, and he you know he was glorified. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're speculating about what he felt, but um, you know you can imagine yourself being in his situation, and yeah. it's a very, very interesting question. I mean, regardless, 
of you know we can, we can only yeah speculation we, we can't we can't say for certain but for certain i was inspired by his story mm -hmm. it's it's definitely yeah it's definitely an inspiring story for me as a amateur filmmaker and uh i, I it just kind of makes me think like you know okay this guy can do it so can i and I, you know, also it was, it was it was an entertaining story along the way with like interesting care. I mean, I don't want to say characters, but they're people. But you know, interesting yeah. individuals. Sure. And uh, it was uh, funny, pretty funny at times, and it was also very raw and real yeah. at times. And and I didn't get the impression that he had a bad life. I think he, yeah. I mean, he had a lot of really great people in his life. Yeah, his mother said. I mean, he said that his father and mother didn't support him at first, but they turned around completely, mm -hmm. and then they. He said, "Yeah, I couldn't have." better parents and yeah. his mother's literally helping them film a certain scene yeah like i mean that that's a uh, i know my father wouldn't do that i mean maybe he would but i wouldn't ask just because he wouldn't know what to do i mean i <laughs> cannot imagine asking my mom to put on a black robe and oh god uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah bash bash in a car in the middle of the woods with me <laughs> yeah he had good people in his life mm -hmm. and yeah I, I guess it comes down to what do you how do you judge success and how do you judge validation? Because um, in, you know, America, you know, in the American movie, those aren't always as obvious as you might expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so other but other than just raising those interesting questions, it's just a really entertaining movie to watch. Yep. Yeah, I'm, it's probably the only documentary that I can uh, watch as frequently as I do because it does have, it has the pacing of a, of a movie it yeah, has it's like a very narrative it's almost yeah. like narrative driven it's, it's very yeah yeah i like it a lot yeah. has structure characters um they they do this cool thing where his friend mike is a guitarist and he plays the soundtrack mm -hmm. like it's like covers of metallica yeah and stuff so yeah this is like a love letter to every independent filmmaker who has gone out and you know tried their best busted their ass and you know got somewhere mm-hmm as, as well as like the cherry on top everyone speaking as if they were from like lifted from fargo it's uh <laughs> even though that is not in wisconsin but well all right accent you prejudiced gave... boy all oh, right now we're getting into insults <laughs> all right you you were the one who made the milwaukee joke right at the beginning i'm nothing against milwaukee i just hate all of them that's all anyway uh, no that's a joke i've never been so why would i hate them i got nothing against them and on that note, <laughs> this is All Nighter Discussions signing out. You can hit the cool. A newer man, Bojangles and.